where you're killing giants, you're slaying them, you're destroying them, you're not pleading with them. You're not saying, can you please stop, please, my home, just leave this home alone and go to other homes. No, no, no. You're in a place of dominion. So when the enemy's operating, you're like, what are you doing here? That's part of your settlement package. That's part of your victory. That's part of what Jesus Christ won for you. Is a divine plan it is our heritage and it is a promise from God for us as believers so every person that is sitting here today the fact that you're sitting here today God is saying yes to your settlement so if you're wondering you know what if God wants me settled does he want me totally and completely healed and whole the answer is yes tell your neighbor the answer is yes the mere fact that you're here you're worshiping in this place that is a word for you for your life and for your, se your this season that you're in that that God has a plan for your settlement, a plan for your rest. And it is our heritage. It is a promise as a believer. So we're going to go to 1 Peter 5 verse 10. Because before the settlement, there are steps. And I remember when I saw this scripture years ago when, we, when Papa had given it to us. I didn't fully like it because of this word suffer. So he would speak it. And you always want to skip to the end part. It says, but may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. He said, after you have suffered a while. Now, when Papa originally brought that scripture years ago, I, I think I checked out. And I was like, suffered a while? That is not glory. But you don't stop there. Tell your neighbor, you don't stop there. It says, after you have suffered a while, you've been perfected, you've been established, strengthened. He says, then settle. Say settle. So he says, the, um, it says, by Jesus Christ, after you've suffered a while, you're perfected, you're established, you're strengthened, and he settles you. Amen. So suffering, pain, affliction is not supposed to be your life. It's not supposed to be the end goal. If that's where you are right now, just know there's still more to come. Amen. Paul talks about, he says, I'm confident of better things concerning you. There are better things concerning you. Amen. So if you're at the point of the scripture where you've been suffering for a little while, listen, tell the devil time is up. Say time is up. Yes, time is up because now it is time to be perfected, to be established, to be strengthened, and to enjoy settlement in Jesus' name. Amen. So suffering is not the end result. That's not why he saved you. That is not why you have been redeemed. That is not why you've been called. It's not to suffer in his presence. That is not God's will. He wants to settle you. And he has said, listen, now is the time you are settled. Amen. And what does it mean to be settled? To be established or to secure permanently. It is a secured permanent state. So it's not like, oh, you know, once God settles me, then the devil's going to come back again. No. You're, you're reaching a point of total dominion. Say total dominion. And it was amazing. You know, as I was, you know, thinking and meditating on this yesterday, I was looking at the story of Isaac. We saw, you know, Minister Edmund went through last week that he struggled and he struggled. You know, the, the wells, they were, you know, covered in earth and then they would labor and labor and labor. And then someone would come and say, that's my water. So they would wait till all the effort and work was done. They didn't come when the, when the wells, when they're starting to dig out the wells and be like, hey, I think there's something there. Let me, let me take over. No, they waited till the well was dug up. And they're like, hey, that's my water. Get out of here. So that's what the devil wants to do. He doesn't mind you overworking and working and working and working and working to the point where, you know, you're feeling tired. He'll watch you. And then at the end, he's like, that's my money. You work 40, 80, 60 hours. And then when that money comes, he's like, boop, devourer comes. He's like, oh, there's a car accident. I'm taking that money. Oh, that investment. Oh, I'm going to tamper that. So he'll wait. He will allow you to invest time and energy. And that's what Isaac went through. Time after time, time and time again, until he got to the place of Rehoboth. And that was a place where he, would, he said, now God has made room for us. Now, I don't know about you, but I was thinking about the scripture. I'm like, that would have been for me, but I would have felt like I made it. I mean, he built two wells. They dug up two wells. Think about it. I mean, like we went to Nigeria and the well on the David's family, it was deep. Now, I don't know if that's what the wells are looking like, but the, it was very deep. If I'm digging out two wells, me and my people, by the time I'm in a place where no one's bothering me, I feel like I've arrived. 
But that's, that's not what God has for us. We, he does not want us to stay and settle in Rehoboth. Think of it as a place of transition. Think of it as a place of preparation. It's a place where God, you know, you're being prepared for something even greater. Because if you're running a race, if you ever ran like cross country, you know, in school, there are like little, you know, pivot and point stops. When you stop there, what's the point of it? To take a break, to get strength and energy to continue, right? You don't stop at those, those little checkpoints and be like, I've made it. Or the drive cars, you know, the NASCAR race cars, they stop halfway and they're like, I'm finished. No, you're just taking a break. You're fixing up your vehicle. You're doing whatever needs to be done so that you can make it to the desired end and goal. That's what Rehoboth is. It's a point where, yes, he was just laboring and laboring and laboring. And he finally, he was like, "Woo!" caught his breath. But that's all it was. He was just catching his breath. He didn't hear God there. There was no manifestation. No, he just literally, it was a moment for him to catch his breath. So maybe some people are at the position where they've just been, right now they're like, you know what? That one devil's just sitting on me. Sitting on me. That's where maybe you're like, that's where I am. Well, the next stop is Rehoboth. And from there, from Rehoboth, guess what the next stop is Beersheba. And that is where the Lord appears. That's where God speaks. That's a place of dominion. That's a, a place of ultimate freedom. And it's an amazing, amazing place. And that's where God says, that's, that's our portion. Amen? So don't settle for the struggling. Don't settle for Rehoboth. Don't say, oh, wow, finally they're not after me. No, 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 no. There's a better place. Tell your neighbor there's a better place for you. It's in Beersheba. Praise the Lord. And don't let these names fool you. Because for me, when I hear names like Rehoboth and Beersheba, like my mind, I just kind of check out. But when I was actually looking into it, it's a place of rest. It's a place of settlement. That's the revelation that God had given Papa. It's a place of settlement. So if you even want to switch the word of Beersheba and say, you know, place of settlement, if that helps you, fine. For me to understand Paul in the Bible, I have to flip his verses around. Because I, to me, he speaks backwards. So to truly comprehend it, I, I flip it around. But God has promised us settlement. And there's another part, you know, and I want to I go to uh, G- Genesis 26, verse 23. Because it says, then he went up. So after he took his breath, he rested. They were fighting him. And finally, he's like, God has made room for me. Whew. Now he can get his bearings, everything in a row. And then it said here in the verse 23, it says, then he went up from there, from Rehoboth. He says he went up there to Beersheba. Now, what was the next thing that happened? If you can see it on the screen, it says, and then the Lord, what? He appeared to him the same night. He appeared to him the same night. Listen, do you think that God did not see what he was going through the whole time? He saw. He was aware. He knew what was going on. But he was waiting for Isaac to be rested, for him to appear to him, for him to speak to him. And then he says, I am the God of your father, Abraham. Do not fear, for I am with you. How many know if you've gone through what Isaac went through, you might be questioning, is God really with me? But he reaffirmed himself. He says, no, don't fear. I am with you. I will bless you. He says, it doesn't matter how many people have tried to stop up your wells. He says, I will bless you. I will multiply you. I will multiply your descendants for my servant Abraham's sake. He said, listen, don't allow your experience, what you went through. Don't allow all of that to taint your Bathsheba experience, to taint your settlement experience. Don't carry that mindset. Don't carry that pain into the new place where God is taking you. And that place, you know, the Bible says that when even when Samuel, he was rested, that's when God appeared. When you're rested, that's when God speaks to you. If you're busy and all over the place, you're not going to be able to hear God's voice. So if the enemy can't kill you, if he can't knock you down, guess what he'll also try to do? Keep you busy. Doesn't seem like an ultimate grand plan scheme, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be. If it works, it works. So some people are like, I outran death. You know, I outran this. I want this. He's like, but I'm just so busy. Well, the enemy's like, that's okay. I don't mind. Because he wants you so busy that you don't have time for God. It's like an equation. It's like A plus B equals C. So he's like, if it's not work plus this, that equals no relationship with God. It can be a bad relationship plus this, no relationship with God. Overworking and plus bad, you know, challenging kids equals no time with God. He doesn't matter. 
He does not want us to spend time with God. He doesn't want us to crack open our Bible. He doesn't want us to worship. He doesn't want us to be able to come to church on a Sunday or whenever the program is happening. He doesn't want you to have time for that. But in this place of settlement, you can still prosper. You can still be wealthy. You can still do and have all those things. But you also still have time for God, which is the most important. That's what Jesus said about Mary and Martha. Martha was complaining. She was busy. She was running around. She didn't hear anything that Jesus was saying. He had a church service right in her house. And she couldn't hear anything because she was too busy working. The anointing was flowing. The power was flowing. People were being ministered to. But she was not. Because she was busy. And in order for her to even communicate and talk with God, she had to take a second, didn't she? She was moving around. Then she's like, God, come on. Look at her. Look at her. I'm busy. Look what I'm all I'm doing. So she took a moment to stop to complain, which people also do as well. Sometimes the believer's prayer is only a complaining prayer. But that's not going to draw you closer. That is not, and I want to encourage you, come on on Tuesday because we're having managing masculine emotions. That's a, you know, a side note. But if you're coming to your husband or your partner all the time and you're just complaining, listen, it's a shutdown. God's the same way. You go, finally, you enter his presence. You're like, you know what? I'm not feeling this, Lord. It's, you have, you have, we have to know how to approach him. We have to know how to talk to him. It's the same thing. So she was complaining. She was going all over. God was there. Jesus was there, but she didn't hear him. She didn't feel him. She didn't enjoy him. She wasn't enjoying his presence. So he just told her, he said, listen, Mary, don't bother her because what she's doing, she's doing what is the most important part. She's rested. She's settled. And because of that, she's spending time with me. And that's what God wants. That is one of the first manifestations. We were praying that yesterday is his presence. Say his presence. And so that's one of the manifestations of Beersheba. When you're settled, when you're in that place, it's his presence. Then you hear his word. Because after when, when Isaac was there, it says that God appeared to him the same night. God is eager to fellowship with us. He is eager to spend time. He loves when we sit down and separate time just to worship him. The presence earlier before when we were just worshiping, we just wanted to keep going. He loves that. When you separate that time and you you spend time in the word, you spend time in prayer, and then that time doesn't take away from your wealth. That's settlement. So the manifestation of that Beersheba, of that settlement is his presence, is his word. He came and he spoke to him. It's wealth, it's prosperity. He says, I'm going to bless you. And another thing, I was, as I was reading and I, saw, and, I, and I saw there is your dominion. Say dominion. Because as later on when he was settled, King Ab- uh, Abimelech, he came back and, he was, and Isaac was like, what do you want from me? And he's like, please, we, just, we can clearly see that God is with you. We tried to stop you. We tried to slow you down. We couldn't. So can we just at least make an, an oath with you? They were literally begging. They're like, please do not bother us. We've sent you in peace. Leave us alone. He got to a point where... He was in so much dominion that even King Abimelech came back and was begging him. He's like, please, don't bother us. Just leave us. Let us have an oath. And when I saw I'm like, wow, part of your settlement is when you're walking in full and total dominion. Where now, if you, if you now go back and you are tormenting the tormentor. When you come to a point of such total dominion that Satan's no longer s- someone that you fear. He's no longer someone that you're contending with. Now he's fearing you. And when I saw that, it reminded me of the story of Jesus when the man with um, Mark 5, and he had legions of demons. The same way that Abimelech came to plead with him and said, please, just don't bother us. Please, please. It's the same way that the devils to Jesus, he was like, please, please, do not just cast us out. Can we just go into the pigs? That was the same, same type of dominion where Christ was walking in that level where they came and they were like, please, 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 please. This was a man that could not be tamed by anybody. And you can go home and read at Mark 5. He was not tamed by anybody. They would try to tie him up and change. He'd just break it. He was running wild. Many people go through that type of situation where it just seems like the enemy is having a field day in their life. He has no restraint. He's just destroying this, destroying that, destroying that. And most people, they try to plead with him and say, please, don't do that anymore. But no, when you're operating in this level of dominion, that's what the ministry is about, raising giant killers. 
where you're killing giants, you're slaying them, you're destroying them, you're not pleading with them. You're not saying, can you please stop, please, my home, just leave this home alone and go to other homes. No, no, no. You're in a place of dominion. So when the enemy's operating, you're like, what are you doing here? That's part of your settlement package. That's part of your victory. That's part of what Jesus Christ won for you. That's the part where, you know, that, that, you know, Papa was talking about yesterday, from the Calvary to the cross. What Jesus did on Calvary, everything that he did on the cross, everything that he did, he died for us. He won it all back for us. Amen. So now we can be in a place of dominion. That is part of our Bathsheba experience is fully operating in this dominion. To the point where they came and they said, please don't bother us. Leave us alone. That's where God wants you to be. And that's where he has ordained us as a house to be. Amen. So it's not, we're not in a place in where we're, we're contending with devils. No, the devils are running from us. Amen. Amen. Say, the devil is running from me. I am in a position of authority. I'm in a position of power. Because the Lord is with me. No enemy will come near me. No enemy will prevail against me. I am an overcomer. In the name of Jesus, I declare that the greater one dwells on the inside of me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So I want you to be encouraged. I want you to be encouraged. I want you to be encouraged. Not to settle in Rehoboth. Not to settle at, oh, thank God the enemy's not bothering me today. No, no, no. There's a place of settlement. There's a place of settlement. God has ordained to settle you. God has ordained to, to allow you to enjoy God without other things being taken away, subtracted. Because there's nothing worse than having something on your head. You're trying to do something and you have something else on your head. Have you guys ever been there? You're distracted. God wants you to be able to come to church. If we can have the worship team, please. God wants you to come to church and to be all in 100%. To be focused on him. To give everything. You, you made it here. So he wants you to be all in. But he's going to be, he's working on all those things. Don't worry, don't fret, don't fear. He's working on, just spend that time. So let's just rise to our feet. We're going to thank God for this settlement that he has given to us in Christ Jesus. It's a place where he appears, he speaks, where his word has come fresh to us. Father, we thank you. Lord, we exalt you. Father, we thank you. Just thank him right now. Just begin to thank him. Lord, thank, thank him thank him right now that he has ordained settlement it is not time it is not a season to suffer that season is over the season of suffering of toiling of wastage all that is over god has said now is the time it is time for your Beersheba experience it is time to enjoy god to the fullest it is time to be settled it is time to be rested it is time to have enough time to fellowship with the lord to serve God. It is time. Father, we thank you. Just begin to thank him right now. Thank him. By faith, begin to declare, Lord, I thank you. Thank you. Say, Father, I thank you Father, that this is my season, this is my season of, divine divine of divine settlement. This is my season my of, total of total rest. Therefore, I declare in the name of Jesus name of that Jesus. no devil will prevail against me, that no powers can prevail against me. I declare that I am in my in my area, in my season, in my place of Beersheba. I declare I am settled. In my finances, I am settled. In my relationships, I am settled. In my parental life, I am settled. In the ministry, I am settled. As a church, we are settled. This we're going to declare right now. Father, we thank you, O God. Lord, we thank you. Father, we thank you, Lord, for our settlement. We thank you, Father, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We are settled. Begin to declare it. Enforce what God has said. The Lord has said, I have settled you. Begin to enforce it right now. Declare God's word. I am settled in my relationship. I am settled in my home. I am settled in my marriage. No enemy will be able to steal what God 
God has given to me. I am set up. I am my shaka ye rebako saka ye. Moko ye rebako so taka ye baya. I am my so koyiba saka ye rebaso taka ya. I am my shona ye rebaya. I am my ye rebaya. I am my saka ya. In Jesus' name. Declare, say, I am settled. I am settled. No devil can disrupt my settlement. The Lord has settled me. Therefore, I am settled. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. And part of this settlement is complete and total healing. Amen. He wants there to be peace and healing in our body. So if there's any part of your body, that has been causing disturbance, that has been challenging the word of God, just put your hand on that right now and just say after me, I declare that by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Whatever is trying to disrupt the settlement of my health, I destroy now. I cover myself in the blood of Jesus. I release the life of God into my body and I command every power any principality, any evil force attacking my body, I root you out in Jesus' name. I declare I am healed from the top of my head to the soles of my feet in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, that is the beginning of your settlement. That is the beginning of your freedom. So if that is you, just say, Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart to be my Lord and personal Savior. Forgive me of all my sins. Thank you for dying for me, for being raised up. And now you are seated at the right hand of the Father. I believe that you are the Son of God. I ask you to come into my heart in Jesus' name. Amen.